A list is a data structure that resembles a chain. It takes on two possible values, nil or cons. The value cons stores two values. If we're creating a list that stores i32, then we put i32 and then followed by list. This is a recursive data structure. If you try to compile the code, the code will not compile. One way to fix this is to wrap the list in a box. This puts the list inside the cons on the heap. With this list, we can represent a data that stores 3, stores 2, 1, and then nil. Furthermore, the list will allow us to share data. So we can create a list storing up to 2, split it here, and then for the next value, store 4. However, implementing this data structure using a box is a little bit tricky. We can make the code simpler by replacing the box with another smart pointer called RC, which stands for reference count. So in this video, we'll start by creating a list that uses a box, and then we'll turn this into a list that uses RC. So to begin with, let's first create a list. How about we create a list that represents this data structure? So inside the main function, that list is equal to list colon colon nil. Here we're representing just this part of the data structure, nil. Now how do we create a list that stores one? Well, we can say list colon colon cons, and looking at the definition of cons, we can store a value. For example, one followed by a box that stores a list. So this will be box colon colon new. And then inside here, we'll put our nail value. Before we move on, I'm going to make this code a little bit shorter. Here, notice that we're always prefixing list when we want to use either cons or nil. I'm going to make this code a little bit shorter so that we'll be able to simply say cons and nil. And here's how you do it. You say use create colon colon from the list use cons and nil. So now Rust will understand that when we say cons, it refers to the cons inside the list enum. And then I'll do the same over here. I can remove this list colon colon nil and simply say nil. Okay, so now our data structure represents nil and then one. Okay, let's move on. Let's create two. We can say cons two. We need to put this cons one nil into a box colon colon new put it into a box. And finally, to store the number three, we say cons three box colon colon new. Now this represents a list that stores three, two, one, and finally nil. Let's try creating a list that splits off at two and then appends the value four. So we will have two lists, one storing three at the top of the list, also called the head of the list, and then one storing four at the head of the list. So I'm going to backtrack a little bit and create a list that stores the common data. This is cons2 and then followed by the rest of the data. Now let's create the part that stores 3 as a head. Cons3 box colon colon new and then store the list, the common part. Now let's try to store the number 4 into another list. Say that b is equal to cons4 box colon colon new and then list. We first create a variable that stores the common part. And then list A will store 3 and then this common part. List B will store 4 and then this common part. However, if we try to compile this code, the code will not compile. Since when we put the common part of the list into a box, the box takes ownership of this common part so that we will not be able to use it to create list B. One way to fix this is to use the borrowing rule. So going back up, let's redefine the list by instead of storing a list inside a box, we'll store a reference to a list inside a box. Instead of having the box take ownership, the box will simply borrow the list. So we put an ampersand side. Since we're putting an ampersand side, we also need to put a lifetime. Let's call this tick A. And to declare that this list also has the same lifetime, we'll put a tick A over here. And since we put it over here, we also need to put it inside here. Okay, now let's go fix our code. You can see that there are some errors. We'll try fixing this by putting in ampersand signs. Okay, and then inside here, we also need to put ampersand signs. For example, nail and then cons. However, this will not still fix the code. This is because the list elements that we create inside here do not live long enough so that we can use it inside here and here. To fix our problem, we need to make this into variables that is declared here. So let's say that nail is equal to, let's create the next part of the list. One is equal to cons store one and then box new. And then we need to store a reference to nil. Nil. And finally, let's create the two part. This will be cons of two and then store one. So now we can remove the code for list and then we'll replace this list with two. We're now back to creating a list that represents three, two, one, and nil. And then also a list that represents 4, 2, 1, and nil. The common part between these two lists are the part 2, 1, nil. 
we did this by creating a recursive data structure. And since we're creating a recursive data structure, we had to put this in the box. For the box to not take ownership, we had to reference the recursive data structure. And since we're using reference, we have to introduce lifetime. The code looks a little bit complex. We can simplify the code by using reference count. Reference count is a smart pointer that is used to share ownership for a read-only purpose. It keeps track of the number of references to the value wrapped inside RC. The reference count increases by one when RC is cloned, and it decreases by one when the cloned RC is dropped. Cloning a RC never performs a deep copy. And finally, it's only used for single-threaded programs. For multi-threaded programs, there's a similar smart pointer called ARC, which stands for Atomic Reference Count. ARC will be explained in another video. So now let's turn our attention to how to convert this list that uses a box and lifetimes into a list that simply uses RC. The first part, I'll comment this code out. And also comment this code out. We'll start new. So let's first redeclare a list. We need to import the smart pointer RC. Use std RC RC. And now let's replace this box with RC. We no longer need the lifetime annotations since we're not directly storing the reference. I'll replace this box with a RC. And then we no longer need the lifetime annotations, so I'll also remove this. So this is what our data structure is gonna look like. Let's first create the comment part, which will be two, one, and then nil. To begin, we need a nil. And then the next part is cons with one. And then we need to store a nil, but this needs to be wrapped in our RC. We do this by calling RC colon colon new. This is similar to the syntax for box. Next, we need to store this into two followed by RC. Cons two RC colon colon new. Okay, this is the common part. To make the rest of the code simpler, I'll also wrap this in a RC. RC new. Now let's try to create the part that splits at two, which will be a list that has three as head and a list that has four as a head. Let's copy this code and then paste it here. Replace the box with a RC, and instead of calling new, we need to call the function called clone. And then we need to pass in the reference to the common part that is wrapped inside RC. This will be list. Let's do the same for the list B, which will contain four as the head. Okay, and that is it. So we created this same list structure, and instead of using the box and lifetimes, we did it using RC. Notice that the code looks simpler than when we used box and lifetimes. Now earlier I said that the reference count increases by one when RC is cloned, and decreases by one when the cloned RC is dropped. Let's see this behavior over here. To get the reference count, we'll need to call RC colon colon strong count and then passing in a reference to the RC. So let's print this out. Say print ln list. And then we'll do the same after we create a list where we have a three as a head. And then we'll do the same where we have a list with four as a head. Execute the code. The list starts out with reference count equal to one. When we clone it to create a list with three as a head, the reference count increases by one. And then when we do it again to create a list where four is the head, the reference count increases again. When the RC that is cloned is dropped, the reference count decreases by one. To see this, we can put this last list in a new scope and then print the reference count again after list B is dropped. Execute the code again. After the list B is dropped, the reference count decreases by one and becomes two again. For the final example, let's traverse to the list and print out the values. This will be a good exercise in dereferencing the RCs. We will run a while loop and for each iteration, we will update the current list. Let's call this cur. Since we're gonna be updating, we'll make this a mutable variable. The type of this variable will be a reference to the list. We set this equal to a. A is a list, so we'll need to make it into a reference. Now we're gonna write a while loop. Here we'll use the pattern match, say that con of some value, and then the tail, this will be the tail of the list, is equal to the current list. Then we'll print the value, let's say b, and then we'll print an arrow. Here, since cur is a reference to a list, when we do a pattern match, the value b will be a reference to the actual value and the variable t will be a reference to rc of list. At the end of the loop, we'll update the cur variable, the current list that we're looping through. tail is a reference to rc of list. To dereference this reference to rc, we put an asterisk. And then to dereference a rc so that we can get a list back, we do an asterisk again. And then followed by tail. This will give us the list, but the variable holds a reference to the list. So we need to put an ampersand sign here. 
So that is what will happen for each iteration. We pattern match cur, and if cur has the value cons with some value in tail, then we print the value out and then assign the tail to the variable cur. When the tail becomes nil, this will not pattern match this part of the code, so it will exit the while loop. So at the end of the while loop, let's print nil. Print ln nil. Let's execute the code. And we get the log, three, two, one, and then nil. Now, one final note, here we dereferenced it twice and then referenced it back again. However, there is a shortcut for this code. The magic code is cur equals tail. These two code do the same thing. Now you might be wondering why. Tail is a reference to RC with a list, but the variable cur has to have the type a reference to a list. So it looks like we shouldn't be able to assign a type that is a reference to RC of a list to a type that is a reference to a list. But we are able to do this. So why is that? The reason is called deref coercion. Basically what it says is that Rust knows how to convert a reference of RC of a list into a reference of a list. So this is the magic that's going on here when we assign tail to curve. So in summary, we looked at examples of how to use RC to share ownership. In our example, we used RC to create two lists. Both lists have a common part where we use the RC to share the ownership. Keep in mind that RC is only useful for sharing ownership for read-only purpose. And it's only safe to use for single-threaded programs. 